Well, join me this week as we continue on our journey of building our building. This week, I decided to work on the doors. So stay tuned and see how easy it is to do doors with these ribbons sticking out. What, what, what do you suppose these are for? Stay tuned and you'll find out. So to start our doors, I've pulled out the, the pieces that we need for the doors. Each door has two pieces. It has a main piece and it has a trim piece. Because I want the trim to be a different color than the main door, I'm going to put those to the side and start by just painting these main pieces. Because these have are made this way, I'm going to show you how to do a ribbon or fabric hinge when we get to the point of assembly. Um, now these, this one is slightly warped already, so I'll have to watch it. Because we've primed, we won't have to worry quite so much about, you know, painting both sides and all that like we would if we hadn't already done that. So the first step, I'm using the same paint that I used on the exterior of the building. And, I mean, painting is pretty easy. I want a fairly thin coat because I want everything to still fit and I'm not worried about getting the edges because the edges will actually be painted with the trim color after assembly. But I will be painting the inside of the door too. We want a fairly thin coat of paint. I don't really want that here. For one thing, we want these little scribe lines to still show, but I don't want my fingerprints on it. Let's put this to the side. I'll just do two of them, and then I'm going to turn the camera off. Finish painting these off camera. When this is dry, I'll just be putting a thin coat of the same color on the back side. We try to go with the wood grain when we're doing this too. It just gives a nicer finish. All right, so I'll finish those off camera. So for my trim color, I didn't want to go buy a whole container of paint, of, you know, really high-end paint, just for this little bit of trim. So I had a color in my craft paints. What I will do is uh, after this paint dries, this will require an extra step of putting a um, clear finish over it. So I'm just going to squirt some of this off to the side. Just like using my tile in my workroom, using this freezer paper means I can use it as a palette too. And I'm using this. I love this blue. This is one of my favorite blues. Uh, it's called Blue, Vel uh, blue Velvet by Ceramicoat. I'm assuming they still make this. My paper's coming untaped. And although we don't need the outside edges, we will want to get these inside edges now. And we aren't going to paint the back sides of our trims for this. So make sure you get all these edges because these are going to show and we don't want any white there. We want this to, to look like whoever painted it did a good job. And remember, any little mistake we make is magnified by 12 when it goes on a dollhouse. So if you make, like if you're painting a real house and you go over the edge a little bit, it's in real scale, it's probably not such a big deal. But when you get into the dollhouse and you go over a little bit, that's magnified, that looks huge. So that's why we paint these now instead of trying to paint them after they're put together. So I think you get the idea here, it's just, Take your time. If the first coat doesn't cover well enough, go back and put a second coat on. 
You can use any kind of clear finish that's compatible with craft paint. I've got a clear finish um, made by Ceramico that I will use. I usually use when I'm doing things like this. You could even use Mod Podge or something like that. Um, before you put your clear finish on, like I said, just go back and make sure you haven't missed any spots. So I'll finish the painting when the paint is dry and the clear coat is on this. I'll come back and we'll do the assembly. All right, so my paint, my finish is all dry. I've got some bubbles in this, so I'm going to have to sand my finish, but I want to get the video finished. So I will sand that down and put another coat of clear on. So I've got all four doors and I've got them with their matching trim pieces. Now we didn't paint the sides for a reason. I'll show you that in a little bit. So our next step now is to make our hinge. And I'm using, this is 3 8 inch black grosgrain ribbon. It's just cheap. Um, cut a nice smooth edge. And cut them a little bit long. You'll need two pieces per door. I'll start with that many right now. I'll do at least one on camera. Oh, I clamps. I need to grab my clamps. So, the first thing we need to do is glue one of these chunks of ribbon to the back side of this. And I'm just going to use my wood glue for the whole thing because it's sitting here on the table. And it probably would have been smart to make sure. Oh, okay, there it goes. And put it about where you think a hinge would go in real life. Now, the important part here is you want it sticking out past the side of the door, but not where it's going to show. Okay, where? There they are but not so it's going to show over here. You don't want it showing underneath your door. Now we're going to put glue on the rest of this. And I'll show you on two doors and then the other two I'll do off camera. But the beauty of doing the doors to doors, you can really do anytime you want to. Now be sure, that, by the way, with this wood glue, be sure you wipe up any, like I'm going to have some sticking out and I'm going to have to dash over to the other side of my table and get my um, wet wipes because this will show, unlike tacky glue that is clear, this stuff dries yellow. So. We're going to go in here and we're going to clean it up. Let's make sure that's not right. And you can clean it up some, you can pop it out too when it gets dry. Now, we are going to clamp. And I've got these clamps in here. I bought extra clamps when I put my table together. So I'm going to see how these work today. But any clamps, you could even use clothes pins, you can use any kind of clamps you've got. It's just these happen to be right here. Clamp. At least the four corners, if you've got enough clamps, clamping in the middle would be a good idea too. Keeping an eye that things are staying lined up. And we are going to sand the edges later. I think this one. If the glue comes out the side, that's not a big deal because we are going to sand that off later. Once you clamp, there will be more glue come out. And I'll probably need to go to my office and grab a um, Q some Q-tips and clean that up because you want to clean all that up. So let's do that one more time. Let's do this door. We've got this little side door. 
it's a little bit different shape it's the same thing but this one the sides are and I want this one to be hinged on this one will matter because this one definitely definitely has a top and a bottom so make sure that you're hinging it on the side that you want it hinged I want it hinged on this side because that's the side towards the wall and I'm going to put these since this is so thin the sides of this are so much thinner here, I'm going to line my hinges up right there. Because that way it won't show as much. I can have It won't show and I can have it further in. I've got a lot more to grip that way. Now I have, sometimes I use a dark color like I am today on my ribbon. Sometimes I've, in the past on a couple of buildings, I've actually had gold metallic ribbon. And that's kind of cool. You don't see much of the ribbon, though. I didn't have any metallic ribbon today, and I wanted to get this done. So I went ahead and, and just grabbed some dark colored. Anything that will blend in. Like, you wouldn't want to use a bright red if you were doing, like, the colors I'm doing right now. But whatever colors you've, a ribbon you've got that will blend in. And I made a mess that time. So I'm going to have to wipe that up. Get it all lined up as best you can. Although, like I said, we are going to do some sanding. It seems like there's always sanding to do to get these doors to fit. Right, so let's find some more clamps. I bought a... I needed a bunch of clamps for another project a while back, actually to attach the lights to my work table here for putting my photo lights up. So I bought a huge bag of clamps that was cheaper than buying just the uh, four that I, or the, yeah, five that I needed. So it was the same clamps I was looking at and it was like, okay, I can buy five of them and pay almost twice as much. Or I can buy this set of, I think there was a dozen in here. They're not as heavy duty, but for what I use them for, they're fine. All right, so again, I'm going to have to go get a Q-tip and clean this up. When these are dry, I'll come back and show you how they look. And that's our project for today. So let me get this glue dry, cleaned up and dry, and then I'll be back. All right, so I've got all four doors are ready to go. Now they can just sit in the box and wait for me to get the building caught up to the point where we're going to put these into it. I like to have these done ahead so I don't have to stop and do them when the time comes to put them in. And they can be done at any point in the construction um, because now they're just ready to sit. I do need to order or create some door poles for each door. And the reason we haven't finished this side, you might be saying, well, the edges aren't finished. That's because I need to fit them into the building of all the dollhouses I've made that have this type of door set up put into them, I don't think I've ever done one that I haven't had to do a lot of sanding on the sides to get it to fit. Once these fit appropriately, then we'll paint these edges and then they can just go in. So be sure and check the Facebook page. Uh, there's usually some conversations going on over there. There's a link to the blog in the description box. I'll go into a little more detail about why I did the doors and how we did them. And come back next week and see what we do then. Talk to you later. Bye.